My name is Mort Larson. I'm a geologist for the Wyoming State Geological Survey. So what we're looking at here is an unobtrusive ridge, a ridge that contains the Morrison Formation. A lot of people associate the Jurassic period as when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. What we're looking at here in the Morrison Formation is the late Jurassic, 150 million years ago, with the Morrison Formation that preserved these well-documented dinosaur fossils. And to give you a perspective on the geology, the Como Bluff Anticline is a southwesting plunging anticline. And what we're looking behind us here is the south flank of the anticline with kind of shallow dipping beds. The cap of this anticline is the cloverleaf formation which forms this geological um, geomorphic structural feature called the hogback. And as we move down that flanks, we see the Morrison formation which is that grayer, lighter unit. And as we move into the core of the anticline, we get older age. We get into the Sundance and into the core of the anticline, we get the chug water. And in this anticline, we have shells, limestones, sandstones, and interbedded with conglomerates. About 100, 180 million years ago, this environment was completely different. We had lowland floodplains, we had river systems. I'm Brent Breithaupt. I'm the regional paleontologist for the Bureau of Land Management in the Wyoming State Office in Cheyenne. We're standing a short distance to the east of Medicine Bow, Wyoming. This particular spot is a place on Highway 30 that you can see the world famous Como Bluff dinosaur site. This particular ridge behind me was a spot that in the 1870s was, was one of the first locations where major dinosaur discoveries were made anywhere in the world. One of the first places that partial and complete dinosaur bones and skeletons were being found. These late Jurassic dinosaur bones were pivotal with regard to the development of dinosaur paleontology, not only here in the United States, but around the world. And who found those bones? Not surprisingly, railroad workers. In fact, there was a section foreman named William Harlow Reed and a station agent named William Ed Edward Carland. So Reed and Carland worked for the Union Pacific Railroad. But in fact, it was Reed himself who was coming back from antelope hunting. He came across these large bones. He realized these large bones on this ridge were something that hadn't been found before. He hadn't seen them before, and he had been working on the railroad for many years in Wyoming. So they sent a letter back to a very well-known paleontologist at Yale University named Othniel Charles Marsh. Marsh was interested in these particular bones and sent crews out here in the 1870s and 1880s to collect the, these particular fossils. Marsh had an arch rival, Edward Drinker Cope, from the Philadelphia Academy of Science. Both of these individuals were the primary paleontologists of the time. The conflict between Marsh and Cope is often called the Bone Wars. The competitiveness that both Cope and Marsh had as scientists fed over to the field crews. And so the field crews didn't get along either. There's stories of spying on each other. There's stories on going out and breaking up bones so that the other individual wouldn't find these particular fossils where major dinosaur discoveries were made anywhere in the world. Dinosaurs of all sorts walked through this area. Dinosaurs that many people are familiar with, like Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Camptosaurus, and numerous others were found and in some cases found for the first time just over the ridge. <laughs>